Hi boys and girls, good morning or afternoon whenever you are watching this video. Today we're going to go ahead and be working in our Wit and Wisdom workbook. You should be watching this video if you've already completed your EdSide quiz and if you have already submitted that. You should also only be watching this video if you have completed your quill assignments along with your handout 3A in the Wit and Wisdom workbook, which is this book. So, most of you already know we have already done this first page. We did this, I believe, sometime this past week. Today we're going to go ahead and be working in the second page. We are going to be looking at a specific definition for the word myth. We're going to be writing the definition, some characteristics of the word myth, some examples, and some non-examples. So this is the only page we will be doing today. We might, at the end of this video, also be drawing something on this page right over here. But for now, let's go ahead and get started. Now, you may use pencils, pens, crayons, markers on this page, whatever you prefer to use to complete this assignment. I'm going to go ahead and be using a pen. Hopefully, I don't mess up because it's not erasable and I won't be able to erase. But first things first, let's go ahead and write the word that we're going to be examining in the box, which is the word myth. So I want you to think of myth. Have you heard this word before? If you have, what type of definition do you have in your own words? If you had to explain the word myth to someone, what would it be? What would you say? What is an example you would give them? So just kind of think. Take your thoughts right now. If you'd like, you can pause the video to think about it. And if not, we can go ahead and continue. So the definition, my definition of the word myth would be like a long um, told story that uh, comes from specific traditions. Um, uh, so to me, a myth would be a story that has been around for a very long time that is not really 100% true. Maybe parts of the story might be true, or maybe parts of the story might not. But to me, personally, a myth is just basically a story that is told, set to be believed to be true, but is not necessarily true. Now, what we're going to be writing here is a definition of myth, which is something widely believed to be true that is not true. So I'm going to go ahead and start here. Something widely believed to be true that is not true. And I'm going to just kind of underline the not true. Add my period. There's not only one definition for the word myth, there's actually another one. So that was the first example. But the second example of myth is a story that forms part of a traditional um, culture, a traditional knowledge of society. So basically a story that is told from uh, long ago. So I'm going to go ahead and put a story that forms part of the traditional knowledge of society or culture. Okay? So let's think of some characteristics. We're moving on to this box, right? And if you are kind of falling behind or you need some more time, you're more than welcome to pause the video to finish writing down the definition. But we're going to move on because I'm trying to make this video short for you. But characteristics, some characteristics of myth would probably be a stories that are fictional. And, right, answering this question, what does fictional mean? Fictional. What does the word fictional mean? So kind of just answer that in your head and to yourself. Hopefully you're able to act, uh, answer it. But fictional means a story that is fake. So if you were not able to say that, right, a story that is fake, then you might want to write the word fake in parentheses so that you can remember that 
fictional means a story that is fake. Now, if I said non-fictional, then that would mean not fake, right? So hopefully you do already know that, but if not, that's fine. That's what this video is for, purposes of learning. So just go ahead and write that down. Another characteristic, let's think about it. Well, a myth can be a story that maybe contains uh, supernatural elements, something that is a, a very old story, uh, maybe like containing magic or some type of uh, symbol for a culture. So I'm going to go ahead and just put um, containing. It's a, you know, myth can be a story containing supernatural elements. Okay, and I'm going to put an example of this can be like magic, um, you know, superpowers, invisibility, uh, you know, things like that, right? I'm just going to put magic. Now, um, usually characteristics of myths can be like old, traditional stories. And usually they are there's a symbol behind right this story it has a symbolic meaning symbolic meaning okay so once again if you need some time to pause to kind of grasp it, grasp the information and write it down you can go ahead and pause the video to do that Moving on. Examples, right? Let's think of some examples of myths. Now, I know a lot of my students are very creative. They've read a lot of stories, right? And they're going to have a lot of different examples. So first example that I'm going to go ahead and put is uh, kind of in relation to my culture which would be the Hispanic culture. And I don't know if some of my students have heard the story of uh, La Llorona, right? Which is an old traditional story in our Mexican culture about, uh, well, if you know, you know, right? And if not, you can Google it. Um, but there's also another example when we read books with ancient Greek gods, like how we've been reading in Ramayana. You know, Ramayana is a story of uh, a hero, but in that book, there's a lot of different type of uh, mythical creatures that are in relations to gods and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put ancient Greek gods. Um, you know, myths can be about, you know, uh, there's been myths of mermaids, right? Unicorns, dragons. Are they real? Are they not? Were they real at some point, right? So uh, those are just some examples. If you have more examples, you're more than welcome to put them in there. No problem whatsoever. So let's talk about non-examples, right? Non-examples. Well. What is not a myth? A myth is not a biography. A myth is not a scientific report. A, a, a myth is anything with evidence that is not a myth, okay? So I'm gonna just write a little note up here. Anything with evidence is not, and I'm going to underline not, a myth. Because if you have something with scientific evidence to prove your case, that is not considered a myth. Because a myth is something that can't really necessarily be proven. It's most of the time 99.9% .9 fake. Okay, so um, what is not a myth? A myth is not a biography. Teachers, please excuse the interruption. As clarification, students will not be transitioning to 
second period until after the volleyball game. Again, students are to remain in first period and will transition to second period until after the volleyball game. At this time, we can see that ninth grade head to the gym, only ninth grade to the gym. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay, if you heard that announcement, just disregard and ignore it. Um, but anyways, uh, so anything with evidence is not a myth. Example, a biography, um, a scientific report, or a, you know, news that is mentioned on the news media. That is not a myth. Okay, so hopefully you were able to get these notes. Okay, if you want to do a little more research on the word myth, you're more than welcome to grab a dictionary, maybe research it and write a third definition for it. But if not, that's fine. I gave you the notes, so hopefully you wrote this in your Wit and Wisdom workbook. Make sure it says Wit and Wisdom Module 2. And if you didn't receive one of those, please come and see me so that I can give you one. Now, the second part of this video is going to just be um, some basic notes about uh, a hero's journey. So we're going to be discussing a, a type of monomyth, okay? So by the end of this video, you will have something that looks like this on your paper. Let me see if I can find my exemplar. Give me one second. Beautiful. By the end of this period, you will have something that kind of looks like this, okay? So first things first, we're going to talk about a monomyth. A monomyth, right, this word is meaning a hero's journey and what is involved when a hero goes off into their adventure, okay? And we are going to be learning more about this, but I kind of want to give you these notes already so that you can go ahead and write them down and you can already have some a little, uh, a little bit of background knowledge to know what it is we're going to be talking about when we do talk about this and examine it more. So... What is a monomyth? A monomyth is a hero's journey. This involves a hero who goes off on an adventure and encounters a crisis, right? Something that challenges them, that they have to overcome. And this challenge will transform the hero in some way. So this, you know, happens in a cycle. We have the hero. The hero is called to an adventure somehow. And as they're called to an adventure, maybe they meet some type of mentor, okay? Once they meet their mentor, the mentor can help someone, um, you know, become better or give them advice. They come across trials and errors, right? They approach some type of battle. They are getting ready to go and maybe to um, defeat someone in some way. Then they get to... Um, crisis where they, you know, maybe they, you know, become defeated, uh, they die, or they are rebirthed in some way, right? Uh, sometimes this happens, sometimes this doesn't, you know, uh, a lot of stories are different, and that's what makes them unique. Now, once they're dead and they actually are reborn, this sometimes can change the hero in some way for the better. Um, they... Uh, overcome their challenge and they gain some type of, uh, you know, prize or treasure, as we call it. And then, of course, they return to their ordinary world and that is where um, they finish up the story and it kind of resolves in some way whatever problem they were trying to overcome. Okay, so let's go ahead and try and somehow uh, recreate this, right? So we are going to be writing these notes or drawing these notes in the back of our handout 1B, okay? So just turn that and you're going to be attempting to draw this here. So the first thing I want you to write, right, I want you to go ahead and write the definition of monomyth right here at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and write that for you. Monomyth. Right, and you want to try and say that word to yourself silently, quietly, right? Mono, mono myth. And the mono myth is basically, this is the definition, it is a hero's journey. Involving a hero who is called on an adventure.
event, the encounter, a crisis, that transforms their character in some way. Period. Okay, I know I'm going a little fast only because I'm trying to crunch everything in. I'm short on time, but if you need to pause the video, go ahead and pause it so that you can go ahead and write that down. Once you finish writing that definition down, you're going to go ahead and come to write, try and, uh, you know, use your best spacing skills available and try and come right into the middle and you're going to write the cycle. The cycle of a monomyth. Right, and I'm going to just box in monomyth. The cycle of a hero's journey okay so that's going to be my center now at the very top and i'm going to use a change in color right i'm um, at the very top i'm going to go ahead and draw my little hero right and i'm not a very good drawer so i'm going to just put a small stick figure now here is where i'm going to go ahead and have my arrows right here first arrow this is going to be call to adventure Right, the hero is called to an adventure in some way um, or in some form. They have to leave their ordinary world. Then after they're called to an adventure, they're going to, who can remember? You're gonna meet someone special, right? And this special person can be known as a mentor. Someone who uh, you know, teaches them something uh, that is going to help them. After they meet their mentor, right, in some cases they do, in some cases they don't, every story is different, they're going to go ahead and have trials, trial and error, okay? And I put trials, but uh, trial and error. So they're basically... I'm going to find or come across things that are going to test them, right? And they got to uh, practice to get better at approaching their battle, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put right over here, approaches battle. They're approaching some type of uh, conflict that's going to you know, builds their character. After they approach a battle, obviously, sometimes some heroes don't always win, right? They have their crisis. Maybe sometimes they die in some way or they are badly hurt. So I'm going to put death and rebirth. Okay? Now... Once a hero dies and they are reborn again, uh, something can happen. Something, uh, you know, changing can happen for the hero. So I'm going to go ahead. Next part is there's going to be a change. Change in the hero. Okay. After there's a change in the hero, right, they realize... Uh, you know, something special happens. In that case, they get, uh, they win some type of uh, reward. So I'm going to go ahead and put here reward. They win some type of, uh, I'm going to also put the word treasure. Right? And like I said, s most of the time, uh, Movies regarding heroes will follow this cycle, but of course, some movies are very unique. They don't always follow this cycle, but for the most part, um, you know, we are examining the monomyth, right? So after they uh, win something, they obviously are going to return to their uh, life, right? Their ordinary world. So I'm going to go ahead and put here return. to 
their life, right? They go back. And of course, we have the resolution right here, resolution. And then we do it all over again, right? So start. <laughs> Right, so this is a cycle. I, I'm so sorry if it's a little confusing for you. Don't worry. On Monday, we're going to continue examining this. We're going to watch more videos about it so you can get a little bit more familiar with the monomyth, which is a hero cycle. But for now, I just want you to have these notes so that you're ready for the lesson on Monday and so that you kind of have a, a little bit of an idea of how this works and how we're going to continue uh, learning about it okay now last part that i want you to do i want you to go ahead and kind of draw like a line here at the top just like this and i want you to write ordinary world and at the bottom down here i want you to draw another line down here and i want you to put special world Okay. Now, if your notes don't look exactly like this, that's okay. Try the best to your ability to make them look similar as much as you can. And if you really need to, you know, miss, I need to do it all over again, I messed up really bad, then what you can do is just turn the next page and use another paper to do that again. Okay, if you would like, but for the most part, if your notes look like this, you should be golden.